Hey guys, and welcome back to another Seasons, a how-to guide revisited. In this video, we're going to take a look at Crop Rotation Planner. Crop Rotation Planner was something that was kind of confusing when Seasons first came out for lots of players because it is a completely different concept to keeping track of your planting schedules and trying to optimize your yield based on a crop rotation. So in order to do this, we have to know a few things. We have to know what is the last two states of any particular field. How do we know that? Especially on a new game save, right? How do we know that? Well, we use the field info screen down here in the lower right. So I'm standing here in this field. You can see that we have the previous crop was a cereal and the previous previous, the before previous, was a legume. Go over here to another field. You're going to see that the previous and before previous, this field, was fallow for both times. So fallow means that we have left the field empty for an entire game year. We have not planted a crop from the first day of spring to the last day of winter the previous year. And over here we have a third field that we're going to take a look at. It is in a different state. It has root crop previously and a nightshade the before previously. So how do we rotate or how do we plan our rotation? What we need to do is we need to pull up the seasons menu. We need to go to our crop rotation icon, which is this one right here. And we have our crop rotation planner. Now some folks will say, I don't want to do crop rotation. I don't want to mess with it. That's fine. You don't have to. Except Seasons is building in the yield per crop per year based on this planter no matter what. It's fine if you don't want to use the planter. You just want to plant whatever you want, wherever you want, however frequently you want it. That's fine. But don't expect to get the same yield out of, let's say, a corn crop if you plant it four years in a row. You're going to notice that the first year, you're probably going to get pretty good yield, assuming you plow it, you fertilize it, and you put lime down. The second year, even if you plow it, fertilize it, and put lime down if it needs it, you're probably going to get a lower yield. The third year, even if you plow it and fertilize it and put lime, you're probably going to get an even lower yield. That is because Seasons is basing crop yield on a built-in rotation schedule, regardless if you use the planner or not. Planner is just like your daybook. It's so you can keep track of how to optimize your day, keep track of how to optimize your fields and your yields. So if we take a look here, we have four rows, so we can keep track of up to four different rotations any given time on the planter. Planner. You can have multi, as many rotations as you want. You're just going to have to document them down on some other form of documentation because we've only got four columns here. The way the planner works is we would pick, for example, this field, nightshade and root. So we would pick nightshade. Okay. And then we would pick root. And this is basically the starting point of this field. This is a brand new game save. So we go from this point forward for this field. Go over here to the field that we looked at earlier. Legume and cereal. So we'll make this rotation planner B. Okay. And we'll make this one rotation planner C. Fallow, fallow. Okay, so this is going to be the starting point of our rotation planning to basically see what are we going to plant in what field in order to provide maximum yield. Cycle through this. Fallow, okay. Wheat. So wheat, we can expect a point eight 
zero yield, 80% of maximum, because for the previous two years, we had a nightshade and a root crop. Not so ideal. Go to a grass crop like cotton, 0.95, so only a 5% drop in yield. Canola actually benefits from having nightshade and root in a previous rotation. We get 114% yield basically off of that. Soybeans, 0.95, back to cereal. Definitely don't want to follow up with potatoes or sugar beets. Poplar in there if we wanted to. Let's say fallow, okay? And now this would, so this would be year three, if you will, okay? I know we're only in our first year of gameplay, but that particular field has two years of crop history. We have to deal with. We have to deal with its history. Okay. You do fallow and then fallow two years. You're going to see these numbers jump. This represents the yield on the second rotation around. Okay. Let's change this back. See how these numbers change. So this is assuming that you plant potatoes, sugar beets, potatoes, sugar beets, potatoes, sugar beets. Basically, you cycle every year. You alternate. This is what that yield is going to produce. Okay. You go to a three year rotation potato, sugar beet, fallow, potato, sugar beet, fallow, potato, sugar beet, fallow every three years. That's what your rotation is going to produce going forward if you follow up potatoes with leaving a field barren for a year. You're going to get 98, 96% yield. You follow up sugar beets behind the potatoes, you're going to get a 75% yield. And if you leave the field barren again for a year, you're going to be back up to 96. If you leave it fallow for two years, it's like wiping the slate clean. The field has no more history. Go on to counseling. doesn't have any dead weight associated with it. You're going to get a really great yield out of your first crop. If you follow up potatoes with sugar beets, not so good of a yield. Okay. What this planter saying is as we saw we can get a pretty good yield out of canola canola actually benefits potatoes okay we get an even better yield 0.8 we follow up potatoes after canola sugar beets doesn't really like that too much make this fallow get a pretty good benefit out of potatoes a little bit of benefit out of sugar beets this is a four-year rotation You can see as you toggle through how things are affected. So soybeans, wheat, nothing means that we're going to alternate between soybeans and wheat. Wheat likes to follow soybeans. Soybeans doesn't like to follow wheat. We make it fallow. Soybeans year one, wheat year two, fallow year three, soybeans year four, wheat year five, fallow year six. You get a pretty good bonus from both of those crops. Follow up wheat on wheat, not so good. This is an interesting mix. Soybeans, wheat, and cotton. Soybeans, wheat, and canola. Canola really likes to follow wheat. Soybeans doesn't mind following canola, but it's not optimal. You can see how you can toggle through this, and it seems like this would be a pretty good rotation, especially if we tossed a fallow in there. Now, if we go year one, soybeans, year two, wheat, year three, canola, year four, we leave the field empty. There's no other rotation here, so this then ro rolls back up to field one. We're getting better than 100% yield. Okay, out of those three game years, you have to leave the field empty for a whole game year. But we get a pretty good yield with that particular rotation. Plan out up to six years in this rotation. And at the end of this 
sixth year, basically rotate it back up. You're going to see if we put in a whole bunch of cereals, all we ever do is put cereal crops in. We're at 86% yield. See some crop, like grass, likes to follow cereal. Root crop like sugar beets really likes to follow a cereal. Let's just play around with this a little bit. So wheat, this assumes we go wheat, sugar beets, wheat, sugar beets, wheat, sugar beets. 0.95% of yield in year two. 1.3%. 0.8% of yield in yield in year four. We toss a fallow in there. Lots of things work up. We put, let's say, a grass in there. We go cereal, root crop, grass. Not too bad. Cereal, root crop, oil seed. Not too bad again because wheat likes to seem to follow an oil seed. Does something nice to the ground. So that is the crop rotation planner. Again, you don't have to use it if you don't want to use it, but Seasons is going to base your yield on a predefined crop rotation no matter what. So if you realize that after a few years of gameplay, that cornfield that you've been planting corn in for every year is just not outputting as much corn as it used to be, well, you might need to plant a different crop in there in order to get a better yield out of it. You might need to leave it empty for a year or two. So you're going to have to buy, manage more fields, to keep fields fallow on a kind of a rotation to keep optimal yield. So it's just something to think about. The way this works again is it goes down here. And when you get to this, you're at the end of your rotation and it cycles back up. This is year one, year two. This is year three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So year one, two, three, and four, five, six, seven, and eight. Also another follow in there. It's one, two, three, four, and five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. As far as game years, look at that. Legume, cereal, oil seed, fallow, fallow. That is a really, really optimal rotation, but you have to have two consecutive years of not planting anything in that field in order to get that optimal type of a yield. So guys, I hope that helped explain the crop rotation planner a little bit. It's kind of a new concept. Uh, it's going to probably take a little bit of time to sink in. So just mess with it. But ultimately, no, if you don't want to mess with the crop rotation planner, you don't have to. This is just a planner to help you visualize and see what is Seasons going to do anyway. So let me know in the comments. What do you think of the crop rotation planner? What are your most profitable rotations that you have settled on? And until next time. Happy farming. Be sure to like, subscribe, and click that notification bell.